Hi folks, this is all the fruit. I'm in Heidelberg, Germany. It's the 4th of July. And you know what's the best thing about this day? The first figs are ripe. Well, why in July? Well, usually, yeah, here in normal years, the summer figs used to be ripe around the first days of August. And then they finish basically around the last days of August. And September is a month without fix. And then in October, the autumn fix started. In uh, the last couple of years, we had very hot summer. So basically, the season switched to July. But this year, the summer was not very hot. And also, if you remember last year, I made two videos about the first not so good fix in May, which is really mind-blowing for Germany, and then about some considerably better, but still not very good fix in June. Yeah, but those were exceptions, because normally this is the shrub with the earliest fix in Germany. So first let's go to the more or less, yeah, strange situation of last year. We had basically no winter last year. I didn't experience it because I wasn't here, but I was taught that there was basically no frost. That in spring, basically, most of the weeds uh, in town were still not frozen, but still flowering and fruiting. And so I guess some of the winter figs from last year survived in a, very, in a pretty protected location. So I could eat some pretty low quality figs in May. And then the first, not a hundred percent ripe, but already quite edible, let's say summer fix, appeared in June. Well, this year, if you remember, I made a lot of videos about very early cherries, very early, uh, very early cherries in April, strawberries in April, mulberries in the first days of May, and so on. Uh, yeah, because the spring was very hot. Um, and dry, but the winter was not as mild as last year. It was still a pretty mild winter, but not as mild as last year. So we didn't have any amazing discoveries with the fix last year, uh, with the fix this year. Last year we had some really amazing discoveries about the fix. So yeah, a lot of early fruit like cherries and strawberries and mulberries ripened very early. With the fix, well, as I said, this is the earliest shrub in all of Germany, and it is ripe. But before we go to the fix, I know you want me to try the fix, let's look at the shrub. Basically, almost nobody is planting a fig shrub. Everybody is planting a fig tree. But until a couple years ago, we had such harsh winters here that every couple years, the fig trees used to freeze down to the ground. That if you see here, well, it's a shrub, but there is a conspicuous big hole in the middle. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that this was basically the rootstock of some grafted fig. And the grafts, the fig variety that they really wanted to harvest here, died completely. And only the rootstock survived. Basically, the roots, only the roots survived. And then the new shoots coming from the roots were, of course, the shoots of the rootstock. And it's a very particular type of fig. It's the earliest fig in Germany, uh, well, in Heidelberg, the earliest fig I know, uh, except for those strange exceptions last year. But last year, those were some freak exceptions, and the first tree that was really fruiting in huge amounts was this one. Well, also, usually it's loaded with figs. This year, if you look at it, yeah, it has quite a good amount of figs. Basically, you cannot complain. There are clusters of figs on every branch, but that's nothing compared to some of the last years. That's like 20% of what we had in some of the last years. There were like really giant clusters, almost like grapes hanging everywhere. So why, is, why does nobody grow this fig variety in Germany? I mean, it seems that it survives the German winters quite well. This one looks like it didn't freeze down to the ground even in the harsh winter 2013. What was it? 2012-13 or 13-14? Well, it froze back probably a couple e years earlier, but it survived a lot of very harsh winters. It is the earliest peak around here. 
look at the size of those things there, it produces a lot of really huge figs. So why is this not a named variety which grows in every garden? Well, let's, let's explore that. Look at that. Well, the color of the fig is quite pale, but as you can see, it's very juicy and very soft. So definitely ripe. When we check it, it almost looks like some sort of hermaphroditic fig. It looks like it looks like there it looks like there seeds, but it looks also to be like there are stamens here. Very interesting. So maybe it, it has male and female flowers. Or maybe I'm confusing the stigmata with the stamens, but they kind of look like stamens. I mean, the zoom on my phone is not very good, but maybe tell me, look at those beautiful structures here, branching like this. This to me looks like a male flower. Well, for example, those two here, they look to me like female flowers with seeds. Hmm. Yeah, nice crunchy seeds. Mm -hmm. Well, there is nothing crunchy about the male flower, so this fig seems to be hermaphroditic. Look here. The seeds are the things enclosed in a little bit of flesh. Well, here I think, I'm pretty sure we have the stamens. Well, what's the taste of this hermaphroditic fig? I mean, it's okay for the first fix of the season. The figs are very soft, so no way to use them as a market fruit. They would probably make it to the market on the same day, but <laughs> here in our supermarkets, actually the fix season hasn't started yet in our supermarkets. We still haven't got those masses of Turkish and Greek and other figs. So this is quite early, yeah. Well, this hermaphroditic fig is too soft. Let's look at this flower. Ah, look at that. Let's look at this fruit. I see female flowers everywhere with already pretty ripe seeds. And here and there, and especially around the entrance hole for the little wasps, there are also a couple of male flowers. So this one has a lot more female and a lot less male flowers. But the female flowers seem to be ripe in this one, while the male flowers here are still underdeveloped. Come on, focus. Look, here you, here you have the ripe female flowers, and here and here you have the unripe male flowers. Now, that taste, it's not very sweet. I mean, the last days were kind of sunny, but also, well, kind of sunny, but not very hot, like around 23, 24 degrees. <coughs> for example, in 2018, where, we, where, where it was over 30 degrees for weeks, and I think months without mm. any pause, they were sweet. So... In extremely hot and dry summers, the fix of this tree can be sweet. But in a normal German summer, they are just bland. Yeah, so they are very early. Yeah, there is a lot of them. But they are so squishy that you cannot, you cannot make them into a good market fruit. And also you need a very good, let's say, Mediterranean summer for them to be really tasty. I think they have a niche like, okay, if you have a, a fig collection, this early uh, fig tree should definitely be in this collection. Or if you like to make stuff like um, jam or other fig preserves, you can also use this one because this year it's really, it's fruiting like a normal fig tree, but in other years it was so low that you can basically collect giant amounts of figs, but half of them will just splatter during collection but yeah if you add enough sugar you can make nice jam out of them 
So folks, I wanted to demonstrate to you a more normal uh, thick year in Germany on this uh, earliest fig tree in Heidelberg in normal years. Yeah, stay tuned for a lot more fruit videos from the beautiful city of Heidelberg. And don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe.